Okay, our final uh, double membraned organelle. So, so far we've dealt with the nucleus, the mitochondrion, and now we're onto the chloroplast. And again, um, just like the uh, mitochondrion being double membraned, little organelle with a particular function, uh, the chloroplast does kind of the opposite process from respiration and its main function is photosynthesis. And again, we'll do the reactions of photosynthesis in massive detail um, in upper sixth. So, chloroplasts are big enough to see down a microscope, a light microscope, and you may remember on your student's day you had a look at an LOD leaf and you could see those little ovals of chloroplasts. You couldn't see any detail about what was inside them. For that we need to have an electron micrograph. So this is our electron micrograph of a chloroplast. And again, now this, obviously chloroplasts are a feature of plant cells only. Mitochondria, you find them in all cells. Nuclei, uh, you find them in all cells. In a plant cell, obviously you've got the cell wall, so that's this sort of fuzzy pale grey area here, not very electron um, dense. And we've got a fluid filled vacuole, that's this structure here, surrounded by a membrane called the tonoplast. So this bit here is the tonoplast membrane, so we're just going to look at that double membrane here. And you can see we've got membrane, 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 and that's the chloroplast membrane. A little bit confusing because there also seem to be a number of membranes on the inside, and that's good because membrane increases surface area. So in photosynthesis, the real key thing that we need to, or an organism needs to be able to do photosynthesis, is a pigment to trap light energy. And all of these membranes here will tra will contain that chlorophyll pigment. So where they're stacked up into um, into rows, if you like, these structures are called grana. And on less clear electron micrographs, they look you know like little dark, quite thick stripes in it. So this is a, a one granum. These are grana the plural, and they're made of these membrane-bound sacs called thylakoids, which contain the pigment chlorophyll. You can see that we've also got this background, what in a mitochondria would be called a matrix, and in a chloroplast it's called a stroma. We do need to be careful with the spelling, because obviously if we miss the R out it looks like stoma, which is a hole in the bottom of a leaf. And in addition, the thing that photosynthesis is going to churn out, as everybody knows, is glucose, but it needs storing. We can't have glucose hanging around in this stroma because osmosis will happen and pull water in and this structure won't be strong enough to withstand that osmosis, especially as you're next to a big watery bag here, the vacuole. Uh, so this, the glucose is pretty much pretty quickly built up into starch and these are actually starch grains. Now sometimes they will look quite uh, black with bits of white in them, but these sort of really large irregular ovals are all going to be starch grains. So again, uh, recognising it from an electron micrograph, you're looking for these big thick stripy bits. Uh, you might be looking for starch grains to store the photosynthetic products in, but again you need to be able to recognise uh, chloroplasts from diagrams. So the chloroplast drawing, they are actually uh, biconvex discs in shape, so they're sort of that shape. Double membrane, because we're still in our double membraned organelles. So we've got the inner and outer membranes making that nice, we're going to do photosynthesis compartment, remembering that if it's a structure it's an organelle.
and embedded in the background stroma which again just like in the mitochondrial matrix don't forget to put the R in it this is uh, this is going to contain enzymes to do some of those photosynthetic reactions and the photosynthetic reactions that it does are the ones that do not depend on light so this does the light independent reactions which are actually all about fixing carbon dioxide into uh, glucose our main sort of thing that we can see are these thylakoids now thylakoids I always like to think of as being a bit like uh, a soft mint. We quite often hear them described as coin shaped. So these are membrane bound sacs called thylakoids stacked into grani with some membranes in between. So I'm just going to draw uh, not very many of these because I'm a bit bored with it now. So, one of these is a thylakoid, and its job is that it has chlorophyll embedded in the membrane. Um, and it's best not to talk about capturing light, we're going to talk about harvesting light. Now obviously if we're talking about needing light and harvesting it, we're talking about the light dependent reactions. So you can't uh, do these reactions without light. And if we've got a stack of them, we're going to call that a grana. I'm going to call it a granum because I've got one and the plural is grana. And these membranes here called intergranal, it means just between grana. Lamellae meaning membranes. So our thylakoid is kind of a flattened membrane sac in structure. So I'm just going to write that in as well. So flattened membrane sac. I suppose a bit like a sort of deflated whoopee cushion. A little bit of a gap in between it. We might also have lurking around in our stroma. Remember these big starch grains? And these store products of photosynthesis. You might also have lipid droplets that do the same thing. And finally, these are very similar to mitochondrion. Uh, in that, they also have a circular loop of DNA and these small ribosomes. So again, in sort of terms of what scientists think, how we how plants gained their um, their chloroplasts in the first place, is this endosymbiotic theory that they were engulfed and it was like, oh yeah, they do something useful. 
they can do photosynthesis and make sugar that's fantastic and again the the smaller prokaryote gaining um, a bit of protection and again that DNA enables uh, chloroplasts to self-replicate and the small ribosomes again don't change their job just because they're somewhere else they do protein synthesis So the double membraned organelles I think are probably the ones that are most frequently asked about. They're certainly the most obvious on diagrams of cells and on electron micrographs. So you should really commit those to memory. How you go about that, um, I suggest, is like this. <laughs>